Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be working on making some homemade shoe conditioner. I've used a lot in the past, uh, leather conditioner really. Um, I've used many in the past and I found that most of them tend to make the leather too soft and so the boots that once fit me at one point end up being too big or they just stretch out or they just don't waterproof well enough. And so I found a recipe online that calls for beef tallow and beeswax and being a hunter, I happen to have kept my tallow from all of the deer and elk that I shot this year. Um, I use most of that for cooking. I did attempt to make some candles. The candles didn't work very well. They just, the, the wax would melt too fast. Um, and so they were, the wicks were drowning in them. So I have this bowl of, of candles kind of tinted sort of a reddish color. I was making Christmas candles out of it. Um, and I'm gonna attempt to filter that with <laughs> an old mask. I already tested how it is now and it doesn't seem to be causing any coloration on, on my leather watch band. So it's really not even necessary at this point. I'm just gonna try to get a little bit clearer so it doesn't look funny. And then I'm gonna add a pound of 100% uh, natural beeswax to it. But first things first, these are the boots I'm working on. These are brand new, pretty much brand new. I've worn them for a couple months. White boots, the White Perry Select. Um, and they're just amazing boots. Um, they're pretty much broken in, but I can tell the leather's starting to dry out a little bit. It's not at the cracking level, but you can see I scuffed it. And when you keep your leather in, in uh, you know, well moisturized, it's less likely to get damaged when it gets scuffed. Plus, it should waterproof pretty well. And so I did use a little bit of this tallow without the beeswax in my watch band. I was really impressed of all the leather conditioners I have purchased in the past that I used on that band. It has held up the longest and it is, the water's beating up off of it better than anything else I put on there. So I expect to get even better results once I put the beeswax in there. So let's get to it. First thing I'm gonna do is clean it with saddle soap. I'm gonna use this old towel. I'm just gonna make it kind of damp and rub a little bit in there and clean the whole shoe, all the shoes down and then wipe them off with a damp rag. And I'll pull those laces too, just so they're not in the way and then I can get the whole shoe. Those will need a little bit of time to dry. So while those are drying, then I'll heat this wax up, this tallow, and get it liquefied and pour it through the filter. Once it's filtered, I'll go ahead and add the beeswax and then uh, mix it, let it dry, and we'll try it out on the shoe. Right, just gonna slowly bring that up to liquef liquefaction. Shoes, you can see they're a little damp. Clean them up, that should look pretty nice. We'll get that filtered in just a minute. All right, we're liquefied. You can see the pigment, it's kind of floating around there. It looks like glitter. Ugh. Well, would you look at that? Doesn't look like the dust filter filtered any of the dust. Ha! <laughs> what a joke. All right, I found an N95. Really curious <laughs> for various reasons how this does. Well, failed science experiment. I'm pretty sure 95% of it went through. <laughs> Guess these things just don't work well when they're saturated. Okay, just put the beeswax in there and just just let that melt down. And All right, got that beeswax stirred in there, looking pretty good. Just gonna go ahead and pour it into these jars and then we'll let it cool. All right, looks pretty good. It's actually, a lot of the pigment kind of thinned out. I brought up a jar of pure tallow just to compare the color. You can see, I mean, even tallow has a yellow tinge to it. So it's not gonna affect the shoes at all. And I put some peppermint oil in those candles. So let's see, it probably has a nice smell. Smells like candy canes and cornbread. Okay, moment of truth. Wow, that's a nice, it's almost like a perfect consistency. Looks like it's hard, but soft. Let's just put a little bit on there. See what it does in one spot. Doesn't change the color, I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a good rub down and then polish them up, see how they look. One of the things I really don't like about most leather conditioners is they make the leather too dark. This is the one I just polished. I just buffed that, I didn't polish that, but I rubbed in thoroughly all over the whole shoe. It does add a little bit of stickiness. I'm gonna try to buff that out, but you can see this left side is not much lighter. So really happy with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and buff it and then we'll test the texture and then do a water repellency test on okay, it. Yeah, I buffed it in. It still has that same kind of sheen and color It's not quite as sticky. Go ahead and run some water on these and see okay, this is do. going to be the untreated one. Just gonna use some loop, I guess room temperature tap water. Let's see how it goes. 
not bad. It's considering these have been warm for a couple months. Water runs off, but it's not beating off. It's not really beating, but it's kind of running off slowly. Let's see. I mean, that's just a premium quality leather. White's boots, man. So impressed with these. Thanks to Rose Anvil for introducing these to me. Would have never known even about the brand until I watched that, where they cut those boots in half. I don't know if you guys have seen the Rose Anvil shows. Here's the treated boot. Let's see how that compares. Oh, wow. Yeah, no comparison. I was impressed with the whites without treatment, but that's like water off a duck's back right there. That is something else. I guess the test will be how long it holds up like that. I'll do another video, so subscribe and stay tuned because you'll see a long-term review. I'm gonna put these on my hunting boots and my hiking boots too. You can see it actually started penetrating after it sat there for a while. So homemade stuff, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to doing it with the tallow and the lard. I think most shoe polish brands are adding cheaper fillers, you know, they're putting petroleum or vegetable oil based products just to fill the space. And then I understand they're using preservatives like salts and that actually degrades leather over time, which, you know, works great if you, <laughs> if you own a boot company um, and you want to sell more boots. But I think, you know, most of us want to make these last for as long as possible, especially with these white boots, they were like $420. So I'm going to get my money's worth out of them, taking the right proper care of them. There we have it. Got both boots treated. They do look a little darker, I think, after they sat a little while, it soaked in a little bit, but it didn't really disrupt the color too much. And they're pretty much dry to the touch. I mean, they don't feel too, they definitely feel a little bit stickier than before. So they may dust collect a little bit more dust than otherwise if they're not treated, but they're gonna last a lot longer, repel the water better, and avoid scratches. Um, and I do like the way they look. So. so if you guys enjoyed that film and want to follow along, want to see how these do over time, please subscribe. It'll keep you up to date on how things are going. I have more jars than I know what to do with. What do I have? I have like three or four. One of those is going to last me more than enough till I get my next deer or elk. So I'm going to give a couple of those away to a couple of really good friends that could use them. And please subscribe. Uh, I did say that earlier, but if I hit 500 subscribers, and your name is in the comments as from posting and sharing, I am going to be giving away one of these jars of homemade wild deer, wild elk, mixed with bee, beeswax leather conditioner that you can't get anywhere else because unless you make a Christmas candle out of it first, it's not the same thing. Anyway, I hope you all like that. Please share and see you on the next one. Just a side note, I realized I didn't have to make that video uh, using the Christmas candles. I could have waited a year, but I wanted to get the word out as soon as possible because I fully believe in using 100% of the animal that we can use. And not only did I use the whole animal, but I, I made it, I made candles out of the tallow first, which failed and I didn't want to waste that stuff. So that's why I repurposed it. And, uh, you know, there's all a lot of stuff that gets left in the field that, you know, nature's going to take care of. And it's really, it's feeding the forest, whatever you leave. But there's so many things that we can gain by keeping and utilizing the whole animal. And it actually will preserve that hunt in your memories and in your experiences day by day. I'm gonna be wearing boots with the animals that I harvested from last season every day to work. And it creates stories and it share. I can share those stories with others. And it's a great way to help change the perspective of what other people believe hunters to be. And if we wanna keep this sport alive and well and thriving, we need to get in front of it. We need to show people what it's all about and that we're not out there just like recklessly killing animals and then walking away. So I just wanted to add that and I hope that uh, you all take a little bit of time and save that tallow and make some boots out of it. Check out the channel. There's several other videos that I kind of cover the same type of topic, trying to use lots of different parts of the animal in ways that you will really greatly benefit from doing so.